हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लाइक एक्सलेंस वेलकम टू आर सेवेंथ वीकली मैगजीन वेर विल बी कवरिंग फ्रॉम नाइन्थ अप्रिल टू फिफ्टींथ अप्रिल टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन वी आर हैप्पी टू से दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर वीक इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू मेनली बिकॉज हाई पॉसिबिलिटी दैट यू विल गेट एटलीस्ट टू क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ दिस वीक इट सेल्फ द रीजन बींग इट्स बीन हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ चंपारण सत्याग्रह and 200 years of paika rebellion high possibility from these two topics at least one question will come so what exactly we should know about this particular topic will be discussed clearly in this video right so let's quickly begin about what exactly we need to see during this time period essay is all about the happiness index which pranab mukherjee has recently raised This question was given in UPSC 2013. GDP along with GDH would be the right indices for judging the well-being of a country. So, in different language, they may actually ask you about the happiness index. That is the reason we felt we can ask one question on this so that the students can practice about the happiness index. and also the poverty index you have gender gap all these if you can actually mention and write in this particular essay it will be very very helpful right so please try to write few students have told that they will be willing to write after prelims please do it whenever it's comfortable for you but just try to ensure that after prelims more number of essays are written The next important issue is about the Champaran Satyagraha. As I have told you this year, high possibility both in prelims and mains, they may ask you about Champaran Satyagraha, right? So as you all are aware, it was the first civil disobedience movement of India by Gandhi ji. Under colonial era laws, many tenant farmers were forced to grow some indigo. whereas once the germans came and they actually introduced a dye but there was reduction in its demand later it increased due to war at that time once again the tenants were forced to grow on this particular thing and the system was actually called as tinkatiya system i hope you are aware of this in history you would have already read about it they may ask you a question about this they may not directly ask you about champaran satyagraha but they may ask you with respect to tinkatiya system alone so the european planters had been forcing the peasants to grow indigo on 3 by 20th of the land and there can be another question about this where upsc may ask you gandhi ji was requested by whom it was rajkumar shukla to look into the problems of indigo planters of champaran in bihar gandhi launched a civil disobedience movement and courted arrest right so in response british appointed a committee and nominated gandhi ji as a member so this statement can be given consider the following statements with respect to champaran and they may say that it was started because of the tinkatiya system which was there and then they say that response to this british has actually appointed a committee where gandhi ji was a member so both the statements will be correct then they may say that the committee decided to abolish tinkatiya system and suggested for giving compensation of 25% of the money taken by the planters to the peasants so this can also be one statement where they may change this 25% to 50% within a decade the planters left the area but what is more important is it was during this agitation that gandhi was addressed as bapu and mahatma this can also be asked in some areas upsc have always asked you questions like who exactly or in which particular movement was gandhi given this particular title so at that point of time it's very important for you to remember champaran satyagraha this year specifically and the second important question that upsc can ask you is who are all the leaders who joined gandhi's movement during the champaran satyagraha it is 
ब्रज किशोर प्रसाद राजेंद्र प्रसाद अनुग्रह नारायण सिन्हा आचार्य कृपलानी राम नवामी प्रसाद एंड लेटर जवाहरलाल नेहरू राइट सो दे मे आस्क यू सुभाष चंद्र बोस जॉइंट दे मे गिव मल्टीपल नेम्स सो एट दैट पॉइंट इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर दिस राइट हाई पॉसिबिलिटी दैट चंपारण सत्याग्रह कैन कम मोस्ट पॉसिबल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम प्रिलिम्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू आई हैव पिक डन शोड इट इफ यू हैव अदर नोट्स रिगार्डिंग चंपारण सत्याग्रह एज वेल प्लीज ट्राई टू रीड दैट केयरफुली रिमेंबर गाइज वेन एवर हंड्रेड इयर्स एनी थिंग इज सेलिब्रेटेड इन हिस्ट्री हाई पॉसिबिलिटी क्वेश्चन हैव कम फ्रॉम दैट राइट सो प्लीज गो थ्रू दिस केयरफुली वंस The next important topic, as I have already told you, is actually with respect to the Pika Rebellion. Modi actually honored 16 Odisha families linked to 1817 revolt. We have not read about this particularly in any of the standard history textbooks that we read. Because of that, this issue becomes very very important. And fortunately, the Prime Minister has felicitated them. that makes it much more important as this is happening in april and may which is just two months before exam so let's see what exactly this rebellion is the paikas were actually the traditional land owning community which was present in odisha and they usually served as warriors when the armies of the east india company actually took over most of odisha this region was actually under the control of raja of kurda and he actually lost his primacy and as he lost even the paikas who were actually present within this region also lost their primacy but as these people were aggressive war like subjects the british actually set up a committee under Walter Ever to look into the issue the commission actually recommended that the hereditary rent free lands granted to these communities should be taken over this actually led to a rebellion type of situation in this particular area so this is actually called as pika rebellion i'll just give you some more important information about this that is the leader who actually led this was buksi jagabandhu took place in kurda of odisha the place is also important for you this is known as pika rebellion and along with this the other reasons were the rise of salt price abolition of the kauri currency kauri shells were used as money for paying taxes and the british has actually abolished it and an overtly extortionist land revenue policy as you are aware there won't be only one factor for any rebellion to take place so upsc will give you which of the following factors led to pika rebellion so don't just consider that it was loss of land but also the other things although initially company struggled but as you are aware in most of the cases it is the east india company which actually won right so because of this as the fort well at that time it is very very important for us to note this particular incident right so let's quickly move to the next important topic the next important topic is about the australian pm's visit to india high possibility that there can be a question about india australia relationship or there can be a question about india's role in pacific or there can be a question about asia pacific and what is india's role even if we are talking about south china sea area which is also closer to australia and india there can be a question about it so today if we actually look at the world politics it has shifted to the pacific ocean region anything that happens in this region is very very important for india and india having good relations with almost all these countries is also important when we look at east asia summit regional comprehensive economic partnership and when we look at several of the committees in which india is also present australia is also part of it earlier we used to call something to be asia pacific india has always requested to call it to be indo pacific 
including India. And Australia has actually agreed to ensure that it would be Indo-Pacific rather than Asia-Pacific. So with this basic information, let's look at some of the recent agreements. One is actually with respect to education. As you are aware, majority of Indian students, they opt Australia as their destination for education. At the same time, with the new Colombo plan of the Australia, they are also planning to send lot of students, Australian students, to this entire region, not just India, but to this entire region. This will actually increase relationship between both these countries. And at the same time, they are actually talking about Skill India mission, where we are planning to get training from Australia as well. Right. Apart from this, what is more important is about the maritime cooperation. As you are aware, in the Pacific Ocean, especially in the South China Sea, because of lot of issues that are happening with respect to China and other countries, India and Australia has actually said that we need to respect UNCLOS and at the same time we should ensure that there is freedom of navigation and overflight lawful commerce as well as resolving maritime disputes by peaceful means in accordance with international law including UNCLOS. This is indirectly they are actually talking to China that you need to ensure that all these things happens according to the UNCLOS itself. When it comes to defense cooperation as I have already told you it is Indo-Pacific which Australia is talking about and Australia is actually planning to join the Malabar exercises between India, Japan and US. Then they are also talking about the bilateral maritime exercise called as OS Index in 2018. They are also planning for first bilateral army to army exercise. Right? So OS Index is important. I have told you Slinex stands for Sri Lanka and India and OS Index is for Australia and India. In India yearbook you actually have a series of names to remember easily. So please ensure that this year high possibility that a third important question that can come is actually with respect to these military exercises. I have told you, I have showed you clearly in India yearbook what exactly OS Index, Slinex, Indra and many others are. And even in the September current affairs I have showed you some of the exercises. By the time we finish of all the current affairs I'll be showing you all these exercises. So guys Champaran, Paika Rebellion and these military exercises three questions from this week magazine itself. So please be careful just try to revise it carefully before the exam once. The next topic that is important for us from Maine's point of view is the Motor Vehicles Bill which is passed by Lok Sabha. High possibility that it will be passed in Rajya Sabha also because there is no much criticism associated with this and whenever it passes on that day or in that particular week if there are any other major issues we may miss this as well. This is the reason we are actually planning to talk about this bill. High possibility they may ask you a question in mains and especially when they talk they may talk about why is such a bill required. Initially, in the introduction itself, you have to write about some statistics where they say 5 lakh road accidents are reported in the country in which 1.5 lakh people lose their lives and the World Health Organization's global status report. Even this can be asked. Who releases global status report? On road safety published this year states that 1.25 million people die due to road accident every year. And there is a Brilliant declaration which is actually done by almost all the countries to ensure that the deaths due to this is being reduced. That is, they talk about second global high level conference on road safety held in Brazil lays down recommendations on strengthening existing legislations, adopting sustainable transport and strengthening post crash response. So, let us see what exactly the bill talks about. With respect to this, all these countries have agreed that they will actually reduce the deaths associated with accidents. So let's see what exactly the Indian government has planned. First thing, 
first thing is you can see about the penalties where driving without license over speeding dangerous driving no seat belt these are some of the things which actually lead to accidents and for that you have to give high penalties so that because of that fear people may not go for that second important thing is actually about treating the road victims on time that is within the first 60 minutes which is a golden hour and it is very very important for us to focus on that the next important thing we need to talk about this is with respect to increased compensation in hit and run case 2 lakh rupees will be given inclusion of good samaritan guidelines you might have seen recently in media that whenever people are being killed or whenever they are dying as well no one is actually coming for their rescue mainly because of the fear of the police procedures later on so for that the good samaritan guidelines is important and then they are also talking about compulsory insurance so that it's very easy to recover the money nowadays everywhere you have this compulsory insurance but still they are making it as part of the act recognition of offenses committed by juveniles you have seen recently about some deaths being caused by juveniles and then they are also talking about automated fitness training for vehicles national registry for licenses and registrations and electronic monitoring because of this what happens is if you actually have at one particular place the data related to all these vehicles it will be easy for you to identify the hit and run cases when the numbers will be known and proper action can be taken against them least possibility that you can get a question in prelims in mains if at all they ask you you need to talk about these points which are easy for you to write 120 to 25 words you can actually write at least these 10 points which would be easy for you to score more the next important issue is actually with respect to indo-mongolian joint exercise nomadic elephant as i have told you exercises are important fourth important question from the magazine from prelims point of view is this and about mongolia you should be knowing some particular facts as indo-mongolia's relationship is important they may ask you with respect to this mongolia is landlocked unitary sovereign state in east asia it is sandwiched between china to the south and russia to the north it is also the world's second largest landlocked country behind Kazakhstan and the largest landlocked country that does not border a closed sea. So this statement can also be made as a question. So just try to ensure that you remember these two. Nomadic Elephant, Os Index, Slinex, Indra, Malabar Exercise, all these are important for you. So guys, please try to remember this carefully. The next important topic which is important from both prelims and mains is actually with respect to employment versus automation. There is more debate today about more robots and fewer jobs. So the question can come in prelims about a definition that is technological unemployment. As you read in economy with respect to unemployment, there are different definitions. Technological unemployment is one. What exactly does that mean? is the loss of jobs caused by technological change. Such change typically includes the introduction of labor saving, mechanical muzzle machines or more efficient mechanical mind processes. Right? Always there is a debate that is technology going to replace the jobs. Even in the industrial revolution, initially for some time there was a debate that these industries, if automation increases, then they may actually reduce the jobs. But over a period of time, again we have actually come across some technological innovations which has given new forms of jobs. So there is always debate on these issues. Whenever there is debate, high possibility a essay based question can come. So guys, Please ensure that you read this from both prelims and mains. Prelims technological unemployment is very very important and from mains for essay you have to read about different processes that are actually taking place. Right? Nothing much to explain in this particular topic. So let's see what exactly is bitcoins. The next major issue from both prelims and mains. As you're all aware about a cryptocurrency called as bitcoins, 
last year in prelims there was a question about this as well but what exactly do you mean by this digital currency one it is not actually controlled by any central government it is actually done or decentralized by few common people the second important thing is that you cannot print as much as you want there is a limit for this and it's a software technology which is actually used to encrypt this so let us see some of the information with respect to bitcoins a committee is being set up till now the committee has not said anything so you won't get a question about the recommendations but let's look at the bitcoins itself the first important thing is that a software developer called satoshi nakamoto proposed bitcoin which was an electronic payment system based on mathematical proof here whenever you open the software and you can actually type it you can print the currency and you can actually say there that i have printed these many currencies and on the basis of that the value of the bitcoins keep on changing it's the first example of a growing category of money known as cryptocurrency what exactly they may ask you a definition of cryptocurrency it is a digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds operating independently of a central bank don't think that no one is monitoring everyone will be monitoring this so if you are actually printing it then you have to pay a particular thing and at the same time you should also write there that these many coins are in circulation they actually expect that all these things goes on in a fair manner and most of the money in this will be paid digitally so it will be easy for anyone whoever is monitoring this and when we look at the characteristics of this bitcoin can be used to buy things electronically in that sense it's like conventional money which is also traded digitally however bitcoin's most important characteristic is that it is decentralized no single institution controls this the bitcoin protocol the rules that make bitcoin work say that only 21 million bitcoins can ever be created by miners this is what i was telling you there is a limit for this unlike the currencies which are monitored by rbi or central banks which can be in any number however these coins can be divided into smaller parts the smallest divisible amount is 100 millionth of a bitcoin and is called as satoshi the name of the person who actually invented it the biggest problem of this is its volatility because as and when it is being printed the value can keep on changing and no one is actually looking at it so it can be used for tax evasion weapons procurement drugs terrorist activities and the fact that bitcoins exist primarily in digital form renders them vulnerable to loss so this is very very important for you with respect to bitcoins it won't come in mains it's only prelims based questions in mains at max they may ask you with respect to cryptocurrency and you give bitcoins as one of the examples if at all by chance they ask you the advantages characteristics and disadvantages we have shown you here these points if you can write it's more than enough but again i repeat least possibility you can get a question about this the last major issue of the week is actually with respect to adjusting fuel prices daily at petrol stations earlier it was fortnightly but now they have actually changed it why they want to do this is to ensure that there is level playing field and the second important thing is whenever government raises the value of the petrol or diesel usually the opposition says that the government is anti poor now if every day fluctuation keeps on happening people cannot blame the government every time because one day it will reduce the other day it will increase it would be similar to the gold then people will be waiting whenever it reduces and whenever it increases then people may not blame the government but they actually criticize the international forums so this will actually help the governments to come out of the pressure of this price volatility but what is the impact of this on inflation and other things it would be very difficult to calculate there are criticisms about this but as they have just started we just need to know 
that it is deregulated. I'll give you one important fact with respect to this in prelims that is actually while petrol price was freed from government control in June 2010, diesel rates were deregulated only in October 2014. Let's think in mains, they may ask you a question about what is the benefit. So you need to know that both private and public companies can compete each other carefully. Economy gets well integrated with the global financial and commodity markets. Daily price change will remove the big leaps in rates that need to be affected at the end of fortnight the daily change in price will help the omcs to get accurate price reflecting international oil prices what exactly does that mean let's say that today the government has fixed the petrol price at 70 rupees but in the next one week there was actually increase in the prices but the people will be actually purchasing it at 70 rupees itself but after only 15 days, the people will be paying more. So this 15 days time, the oil marketing companies will be losing. So this actually leads to a lot of problems. But again, this should not lead to storage of petrol or diesel because they may reduce selling whenever the price fall and whenever the price increases, they may show that there is enough oil present. So this needs to be avoided. So let's see practically how exactly does this work, right? So the question from this area is from UPSC 2014 itself. Just go through this once carefully. Then in GS paper 5, what is the role of educational institutions in shaping the ethical behavior of a person? And they're also talking about the case study, right? So guys, October and November current affairs will be released by Thursday. So just go through that once carefully, right? So as I have promised you, we'll be covering this. I'll be releasing India yearbook within this week. And we will be releasing all the videos in one go. So you need not worry that I'll be releasing one after the other. So these will actually help you to cover current affairs from both prelims and mains before this exam. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching.